Hello, this is Rachel from Good Behavior Beginnings, and today's video is going to be a recap of our first week of homeschool. So stick around if you'd like to hear how it went. So we made it. We finished our first week, and it wasn't terrible, which is great. Um, you know, I think at the end of the first day, I realized that I had expectations that we were just gonna sit down and learn and everything was just gonna be exciting and engaging and I don't know why I thought this because I know that my kid does not necessarily like to read so when we got to that part it was rough and you know just keeping in mind what what works for your kid and um, and then trying to make that more interesting and and certainly we're gonna work on that um, but it you know even though even though I know some of these things from a professional standpoint like when it's your own kid you kind of just don't necessarily think of it so um, I want to go over like some of the things that we learned and um, what we might be doing differently so one thing was uh, I think we did a really good job of establishing a good routine as far as the timing goes so Whereas um, some homeschoolers are going to have a bit more flexibility about timing and when they can work on stuff and taking long breaks and starting late. Like, unfortunately, because I'm working full time and my husband's working full time, that we have, you know, a certain amount of hours that we're going to have to get school done. So we do have to be a little bit more particular about when we're doing school. Um, but we don't have like the timing of everything within that nailed down as to like, well, at this time we have to do math and at this time we have to do language arts. We can be flexible with it during the day and, and also through the week. And I think that part's gonna work out really well for us. So um, our timing is gonna be 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and this week it was Thursday, but then we found out my husband's schedule is changing, so next week it'll be Friday instead, um, because that's the day he'll have off. So, four days a week in the mornings, um, but 8 to 12 is basically what we're working with so that we have time to log in to our jobs and do the other work that we're expected to do. Um, we did do a good plan of making sure that we were bumping bedtime up a little bit earlier than it had been all summer. And, uh, and, and so, you know, bedtime routine the night before went smoothly because it wasn't the first time that we were bumping things up. And so that was great. Uh, wake up by 7 a.m. I um, eat breakfast. Uh, we don't do a big fancy cooked breakfast kind of a thing. So it's, you know, a, a smoothie shake in a bottle or cereal or oatmeal or something fast. But, um, but I also have snacks down here in case we needed them, which I think she, we only used once um, this week, um, but they're available. Uh, so breakfast, uh, hygiene, clothes, and then into the classroom by eight o'clock. So that went smoothly. Um, and, and we didn't really see any resistance for getting in here and getting started. The tough spots that we did have were about what we're doing and when. So we start each day with morning work, which kind of sounds silly since all of our work is in the mornings, but morning work, just our, our waking up our brain, getting into thinking mode. And I'm going to do another video about what that looks like now that we've tried it out. So I can kind of tell you um, what's working. And uh, then after we complete that morning work, which takes maybe 15, 20 minutes or so, I let my kid choose what they want to do next. So, you know, we can jump around on that schedule over here. It doesn't have to be completed in that order. We can jump around to whatever topic we feel like. But by 10 o'clock, um, so two hours in, halfway, I am going to start choosing and making sure that we have 
um, hit our core subjects, which are language arts, math, and Spanish. So those are the ones that I want to make sure that we accomplish. Um, so we did hit some rough patches, some protest behavior, some back talk, some eye rolling, some stomping of feet, and sighing, and these kinds of things, which are not unusual for my kid um, and, and would be expected uh, with a new schedule, a new routine, and with parents now playing role of teacher. So it, it wasn't surprising. Um, things that helped us sort of work through that were, um, you know, giving the opportunity for choice um, at other points during the lesson. So the first day when, um, when it was my turn to choose and it's 10 o'clock and I'm like, okay, let's, we're done with science for today. Um, we're moving on to something else. You know, there was protest behavior, but by the next couple of days, um, you know, th they got the idea, let's, uh, can I choose? Is it your turn to choose? And, and so we basically kind of took turns choosing. Oh, you can choose this one. Okay, now it's my turn to choose what we're doing next. Okay, here's your choices. You can choose between these two. Do you want to do math or do you want to do Spanish next? Um, so staging it that way where there is choice, um, but there's also that structure. And having that list, um, really liked marking off when things were done, especially since like the top half of that list, let's see, like that amount, oh, I can't even do it. There we go, like the top half of that is morning work. So we get actually done with that um, really fast. We just wrote everything out so we don't skip any of it. Um, but so that can feel like kind of nice to see that you've already gotten through like half of what you're supposed to do, even if the timing on some of the other ones takes longer. And there are a couple of things on that list that we have decided we're going to do outside of the, the school hours. So music is, it's 10 minutes on the piano. Um, it's something they're already familiar with. And, and so we're uh, giving flexibility as to when in the afternoon they want to do that. So we're not fitting music in in the morning. Um, and I had game on there and actually per, per the child's request, um, they don't wanna do games during school. They'd rather get school work stuff done and do fun stuff in the afternoon. So, you know, game is something that we'll do as a family in the evenings. Um, and that's kind of where we are with those. So I know that there are some of those things on that list that I'm going to change up. Eventually, um, we might leave it like this for another week before we actually like type it up and print it out differently just to see if the second week sort of flows the same way. But giving some of those choices, having things written down so there's a clear plan as to what we're accomplishing each day and then um, having that structure, but having a little bit of flexibility with it. Um, when things would get tense <laughs> and we get frustrated, um, I, I've done a lot of modeling of like taking a deep breath, counting to 10. Um, sometimes that works. Um, you know, I'll model and most of the time what I get is <gasps> with a lot of spitting and air like right back in my face but but it does like even though that's sort of like an inappropriate way of doing it um it does sort of serve as a little bit of a reset and from there um my child is able to you know find find their words and explain things a little bit better even if the words are just i need a break and where we are in our house, uh, there, there are bedrooms on both sides. So um, just pop into the bedroom and calm down, you know, scream into your pillow, jump up and down, squeeze a stuffy, whatever it is that is going to help you calm down. There's no electronics in the bedrooms um, right now anyway. So um, go in there, take the time that you need, come back out. Um, so far that has worked really well, actually. Um, I can hear 
Um, so I know if, uh, if it shifts from trying to calm down to playing around, so I could go in and I could check if I needed to, but so far, you know, uh, they've been in there a minute or two and then come back out and then have sat down more ready to work. Not necessarily all the way back to, you know, baseline levels, but a little bit calmer. We can at least talk through whatever the issue was. So that's been really good. And we're going to keep using that as a strategy just to take a break and calm down and, and take some breaths. Um, some other things that uh, have found helpful is making sure that we're not just sitting at the table for a lot of the time. So um, very few things actually have to be done on the table. Um, I've got a clipboard that we can take papers and put them on the clipboard and we can write on the floor, we can be on the couch, um, we can be at the table. Really the computer's the only stuff that has to stay at the table and that's just because it's an old computer that you can't unplug or the battery dies in like two minutes. So it is what it is. Um, but our computer lessons are, are short like I thought they would be. So the math lesson, um, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes so far. Um, it does seem to be a review, um, but that's really good to, to get used to a new online system with review materials. So that's helpful because we're not trying to learn the system and the content. We're just learning the system because she already knows the content. Um, the other piece would be um, Spanish, which um, it does look like we can get through one lesson in a week. Um, the first day of that lesson looks like it's going to be a little bit longer. It was 30 minutes this week. So we kind of broke it up and we took a movement break in the middle. So get up, jump around, move around, stretch, whatever, wiggle, go get water, go get a snack. Um, any of those type of things to just get up and move. And then in the other video where I described our, where I did our minimalist uh, classroom tour, um, we have a drawer with like fidgets. So if I'm doing the reading, uh, they can get out the fidget and they can play with it. And while they're listening, I ask questions to make sure that they're still listening. Um, but I don't mind if they fidget. I don't mind if they play on the floor um, while they're listening or if we're watching a video for science. We had a couple of videos that we watched. So, you know, we sat on the couch or we sat on the floor and, and watched those little 10 minute videos. So if that works for your learner and they can fidget and pay attention, that's great. If the fidget is distracting, then maybe just take those breaks more frequently. Do things in smaller chunks and then take a movement or a fidget break. Um, another thing is mixing up the order. So uh, if my child were to choose, um, they would probably save all of the less preferred things for the very end. But as a parent, I can recognize that that means that that last hour, we're going to struggle because everything is going to be non-preferred. So instead of saving everything to the end, we kind of alternate that choice. Okay, you pick the next one. I pick one. So I'm going to pick one that, you know, maybe a slightly less preferred. Now you get to choose. You pick another preferred activity. Um, now I pick, and then that way we're mixing it up. So it's not all of the fun stuff and then all of the less fun stuff. <laughs> um, we're interspersing it, we're mixing it up so that we are, are not <laughs> hitting a wall an hour before um, school is done for the day. Um, as far as curriculum goes, I did find that everything that we were trying to get done on Monday uh, seemed to be a lot versus Thursday and Friday. We actually finished, I'm sorry, Wednesday and Thursday, we actually finished everything um, before 12 o'clock, like, you know, 10 minutes before or something. And we just spent that extra time like playing outside or doing something fun. And, and I know that that's going to vary a little bit with like 
some of these activities. So science can be kind of open-ended um, or, or certain projects may take a little bit longer than we thought. Uh, Monday was an issue with that. Um, it was a build your own robot for ages eight and up, which we are just barely eight. So, um, and then of course it's like actually connecting like with wires, the battery to, um, I don't know, to, to whatever the motor is. I've never done that before. You know, if my husband had been here, he's done electrical work before. So he would have had no problem with it, but I had a lot of problem with it and my child was getting frustrated that it wasn't just like a snap together kind of project like we kind of thought it was. So, you know, maybe maybe look ahead at what the projects are. Um, maybe for science, I will say, okay, we can do a kit and here are your two choices and not just which kit do you want to do because I was unprepared for that. It was stressful for me to try and figure it out it was stressful for the kid to wait and it was, um, it put a sort of behind schedule. I'm not gonna change anything up in my lesson planning yet for next week because I really do think that Monday sort of had a little bit more to do with that science project, which is why we were, why we had so much to do. I don't think it was necessarily like the language arts and the Spanish and the math introduction. Um, but we'll see how it goes this week. And, you know, the, the goal, the lesson is to, um, to see how it goes and then to use that information to change it up if we need to. So, you know, if, if this coming week, Mondays also feel the same way and, and by the end of the week we have more time, then I'll sort of rebalance how we are presenting things. Um, so we can mix it up and do it in a, a slightly different order instead. So I think that's really all that I have. Um, again, you know, we made it and it wasn't awful. So I think that's a win. Um, one week under the books, uh, or one week in the books, under the belt, whatever. Um, one week is done and we're moving on planning for the second week and, and don't have to do a major restructure of everything. So I consider that pretty good. Um, let me know how your first weeks are going, if you're just starting this out or if you've been doing this for a while, any tips for those of us that are brand new to this and, and maybe what we can expect. I sort of expect that at some point, you know, the honeymoon period will be over and we might get a little bit more pushback. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that that might be coming and we'll see how week two goes. So see you next time.